be here. So what we're going to do today is we're going to talk about some additional commands in AutoCAD. Just like what we just said, you guys know how to draw a line. You can grab the line tool, you click, you pull, you type in a distance, you hit enter, and you have lines. So if you were going to draw a 5x5, five five, pretty, whoops, that went crooked, uh, pretty simple to do this. It's not a difficult thing to draw a 5x5. Five five. We're going to draw up, type in, and we're going to do a 5x5 five five rectangle, which is equal size as a square. So we have this. Now, I don't want to draw all these lines anymore. What I can do is I can now use a different tool. We're going to find the rectangle tool. So if you pull down your tools here, you have a rectangle and a polygon. We're going to work with the rectangle tool. And what's important about the rectangle tool is when you select the rectangle tool, you have to come down to your command line. And you need to start reading your command line. This is where you interface with AutoCAD. The command line says specify first corner point or chamfer, elevation, fillet, thickness, width. Well, these are options, okay? Right now, all I do, all I want to do is specify the first corner point. So in my drawing space, in fact, I'll move over here so I have a little cleaner space, I'm going to specify the first corner point by left clicking once. Click, and then I move out. Now, as I move out, if I click a second time, I've now made a rectangle. But this rectangle has been created at no specific dimension. This means nothing if I need an 8-inch uh, rectangle, okay? It means absolutely nothing. If I come down here, this is just some random sizes. So what we could do is we grab the rectangle tool. We specify the first corner point. Whoops, I'm sorry, it was a dimension. We grab the rectangle tool. We click and we pull. And now my command line says specify other corner point or. Well, then I have these options, area, dimensions, or rotation. If I want to make a 5 by 5 I need to tell it I know the dimensions. So I can come down here and click on this, or notice the first letter is highlighted very slightly. If I type in the letter D and hit enter, it now picks up the dimension tool. So I can now dimension length. So if I want to type in a five and hit enter, and then it says specify width, five and hit enter, now I've made that rectangle. Now the only thing is it doesn't know where to put it. Do I put it here or here or here? So I'm going to move up here and just click. Now I have a rectangle. And it's not just four lines. It is a rectangle. It is a joined thing. It recognizes it as a thing. Okay? All right. So if we're successful rectangle drawers, what we're going to do next is I want to start playing with another tool called the offset tool. Okay? The offset tool is going to allow you to take any object whether it's a line or a rectangle, and then offset it a specific distance, okay? So let's do this. To start this off, let's just grab a line, move off here in space, click and pull, and I want you to draw a 10-inch horizontal line just like this. And once you draw that 10-inch horizontal line, I want you to go ahead and kind of position it down here towards the bottom of your drawing space so that we can start utilizing the offset tool. So we're going to go ahead and make a series of copies of this line. But the first one that I want to make, I want to use this offset tool. So I select the offset tool. All right, it's hidden uh, just down. In, and it's one of the words, that, uh, the tools that don't have a name next to it. Um, but it sits here. I'm going to sit over top of it. And it should pop up with a name here. Well, it's not popping up with its name. Why can't I do that? There it is. Yeah, there are two U's that are sort of chasing each other. All right. So the offset tool, click on the offset tool. And now my command line. It's important to know what it says. It says specify offset distance. Okay, and if you've never used it before, it's going to say zero after that. I'm going to give it a distance. I'm going to go ahead and type in one and hit enter. Once I do that, it now wants to then take an offset by one inch. So it says now select object to offset right down here. So I'm going to click on my line and then I move above the line and you can see the dimension in blue of one inch. I then move below the line. Above the line, below the line. It doesn't care what side I go on, but it wants to offset it in one direction. So I come above the line and click. There it is. I want to do another one and click. I'm going to do another one and click. And it just keeps offsetting those objects. Okay? That's how the offset tool can function. So you can keep putting lines a specific distance away from another line. All right. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take that same tool and we're going to offset some lines that are based here. But these are rectangles and other lines. So what I'm going to do 
I'm going to move one of these squares over here next to the rectangle. So this is the rectangle because if I click on one portion, it all highlights. If I click on one portion of this rectangle, I only get one line. Now, there's a significance in this when I start the offset tool. I grab my offset tool. And it then says, specify offset distance. Oh, and it remembers I used one inch before. It says one. I don't have to type it in again. I'm just going to hit enter to accept that distance. And now I'm going to grab this line. And I'm going to come in and click. I'm going to do this line and come in and click. This one and come in and click. And this one and come in and click. And I notice, oh, yeah, well, that's great. If I need a three by three, there it is. But now watch if I click on this object and come in. Do you see the difference? This does not have any additional lines on the corners. This does. To get the same object, I now have to utilize a different tool. So in order to clean up these corners, what we would really have to do is to one of two things. If I want this to look like this, I got to come in here. So I highlight this line, I highlight this line. I take this blue grip, I click on it, and I start pulling it back, and I drop it here. And then I take this one and pull it back and drop it here. Now. That'll start cleaning up the corners, but think about how much time and effort that's going to take. Okay, I don't want to do that. What I would do is I'm going to employ a new tool called the trim tool. The trim tool is located on your modify bar. It looks like a pair of scissors. It's going to cut a line. And I highlight everything that I want to trim. Because what I want is I want to cut this line here, but I don't want this line to disappear. So I'm going to cut from here to this line. And I want to do the same thing here. So AutoCAD wants to know what's going to get cut and what's it going to get cut back to. So I'm going to highlight everything here. Then I go up and I click on the trim tool. Trim tool's turned on. And now I just need to click on what I don't want. I don't want that line. I don't want that line. I don't want that line. And then I'm even going to get so far to say I'm too lazy to click on each line. So I'm going to do this little panning window. See this panning window? It is so fast and easy to do a little panning window, whip right across these lines like that, and just get rid of them. Because it sometimes gets too tedious to find the line and click on it. Just do a little panning window. Okay, hit escape and the command, and now you've trimmed it up. All right, now, trimming is, 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 is great. It works. Now, let's get into some crazy trim stuff. Let's also use that tool we learned yesterday with copy. I want to start taking these four lines and I want to make a series of copies, okay? I want to highlight all four of these lines at one time. I'm going to grab the copy tool. And then I'm going to very specifically and purposefully grab the bottom of the first line at the end point. So I grab that batch. And now I'm just going to move way up here like this, okay? Because what I want to do is I want to move the copy and place the copy where the next logical set in this uh, uh, array would go without using the array tool, okay? So this is gonna be one inch, two inches, three inches, four inches away is where this set should end up. But I'm just gonna zoom out. I'm gonna put this way up here like this and I'm gonna type in four and hit enter. You see that batch just show up? I'm gonna type in eight and I'm gonna hit enter. Oh, another batch just showed up. See how this is working? So I'm actually offsetting these things by a displacement point, okay? So as you do this and you start throwing these things in, in here and we start throwing these up, this is all going to start throwing itself in positions, okay? So that's a great way to take an entire batch of things, copy all these things, grab it from a displacement point, and move into the designated area. And now if I were to say, ah, oh, what do I need, 16 now? And drop that. Now I'm copying all those copies. Okay, so right now I have 34 lines that are horizontally located at zero that are one inch away from each other. And it happens so quickly. If I gave you a pencil to do this and a, and a scale, this would take a whole lot longer than that. Okay, so very fast tool. Now, after you make a bunch of copies, all right, I want you to take your line and just draw an angled line down across them like this. Just draw an angled line. Nothing fancy. Here's where I'm going to use the trim tool again. I'm going to highlight everything. Whoops. Highlight everything. Grab my trim tool. And then notice my window. See how I'm nipping off all of these lines now? I'm not clicking on any one line. 
for me to actually come in here and click on this one and this one and this oh that that would just be painstakingly slow big old panning window notice that my panning window is also in green i'm just grabbing the tips and they're all trimmed they're all gone okay gone now draw another line over here uh, let's go this way all right highlight everything here again but this time instead of using the trim tool i'm going to do the opposite I'm going to pull down the little arrow next to the scissors, hit the extend tool, and then I'm going to then start sliding my mouse down across these. And notice how these are all now extending from one side to the other. Well, now they're trimming back off because I'm going backwards. So if you start doing these tools and you start working through these tools, you'll start to see how the extend and how the trim tools can work. You have to have another object to extend to. Okay. So all of these tools have great purpose and use. Right now, they're just kind of fun to play with. I'm going to do another tool here where I'm going to just draw a quick circle. I'm going to highlight everything. And this time, I'm going to use the trim tool. And I'm going to trim everything out in the middle of the circle. So that it works with any object, as you can see. All right, one more thing I'm going to show you before we get done here is I want to show you how to use a displacement point for a line. So what that is, is if you have an object, and it can be an object, it can be a line, it can be a rectangle, it can be anything. It doesn't matter what it is, it's a point. So let's say that I want to grab and start drawing another rectangle, but it needs to be three inches away from this rectangle, okay? Well, I could click here, I could draw a three inch line, and then I could go ahead and start drawing my five by five out here, all right? I could certainly do that. That is one way to do that. And then, why does my mouse keep moving on its own? And then what I could do is after I draw this five by five, this is all fine and good. Then I would come back and delete this line because I don't need it. Well, a better way to do it is to grab your line tool and then sit over top of a point. As soon as it turns to the end point and it says the O snap that you're on end point, now you can slowly move your mouse away from the point. I didn't click. I'm just slowly moving. And what's happening is I get that green extension line. And you can see the extension numbers growing. Four, five. Now I type in the number I want to be displaced from. Three, enter. And now I started drawing at three inches away from that point. This is a great tool because I can now start spacing things away from other objects. Generally, whenever you start drawing anything, there has to be a relationship to other parts and pieces. So having a specific relationship is important. It also works in the vertical. Wait till it turns to an endpoint and then slowly start moving away. And I could type in say three and hit enter and then I can start drawing. Okay, this is using the displacement tool uh, from AutoCAD. So hopefully all these little tools are gonna help with these drawings that you're gonna do next.